Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. We all have loved ones who have died, and many of us have wondered if death is the end. But whether they're simply reaching out to say a final goodbye, or they're letting you know that they will always be there to watch over you, tonight's stories indicate that death is not the end. Remember to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you liked tonight's video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together. My grandfather was my world. Whenever times would get tough, he was the one I would turn to first. When I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, he was the one who got me the help I needed. He passed away in 2009. His home caught on fire, and although he did get out before receiving any serious burns, the smoke was too much for him, and he died of smoke inhalation. After the fire, the only thing that I had left of his was a large framed picture of him when he was a Marine. It hangs on the wall above my couch, next to a picture of my grandmother and father. When my grandfather died, I stopped taking my medication, and my mental health started slowly going downhill. Within a few months, I wasn't doing well at all. I was in a very dark place, and all I wanted to do was take that final step. Then, it would all be over. The pain, the darkness, the sadness, all of it would be gone. Well, one night I decided I was ready. I wrote my goodbye letters, opened a bottle of Jack Daniels, and sharpened my knife. I was in my living room on the couch, with the music blaring. I knew the loud music was probably bothering my neighbors, but so what? It wouldn't be my problem much longer. I finished the bottle of Jack, picked up my knife and held it to my wrist. I thought it would be so easy, and I'd finally be free. I sat there trying to convince myself to do it. Just do it. Just do it, I told myself, and I felt the blade digging into my skin. At that moment, my grandfather's picture fell off the wall, and it landed on my hand, causing me to drop the knife. Stunned, I just looked at his picture on the floor, and as I did, I heard his voice in my mind. He said, You're strong. You're worth it. You're important, and you can beat this. I love you. I broke down crying. It felt as if a very heavy weight was lifted off my shoulders, and for the first time in a long time, I could breathe again. I put the knife away and decided to live. After that, I got back on my medication, and while I still do have some pretty bad days, whenever I get down or have dark thoughts, I remember my grandfather's words. I fully 100% believe that he is watching over me, and that he saved my life that night. Growing up as a kid, I always saw this little boy in my room, standing in the closet. He always wore blue, and he would just look at me and smile. He always had this infectious grin, and something about him made me feel safe. I first remember seeing him one night when my parents were arguing, and I was upset. He was just there, smiling, and I felt like he was trying to cheer me up skip ahead a few years and I was starting to try things to interact with him, like saying, tap on the wall if you're real. Sometimes I would hear the knocks and sometimes I wouldn't, so I started doubting myself and the existence of this little boy. That is, until the night that I tried to take my own life. I slashed my arms and wrists and my parents rushed me to the hospital. The cuts were bad and pretty deep but oddly, they stopped bleeding almost instantly. The doctors told me I was lucky to be alive. Later, recovering at home in my room, I saw that little boy again, 
but this time he didn't smile. He looked very concerned. I asked him if he was the one who saved me, but he disappeared without answering. So all of this made me go to a medium because I wanted to find out what was going on. During the reading, she told me things about my family that I didn't know myself. She told me that my brother wanted to say something. I don't have a living brother, but I did have a brother who passed away shortly after birth and before I was born. But how did she know that? She said my brother has always been watching over me, and he's very proud of a lot of the things that I've done. But he's upset that I tried to take my own life, so he stepped in. He made the bleeding stop so that I could go on and have a full life. I asked if he was the boy that I had seen and heard growing up, and she said that it was, and that he would always watch over me and my family. I started sobbing. Then I thanked the medium and my brother for everything. To this day, when I'm sad, I'll ask for a knock on the wall, and I'll usually get a couple. This is what really cemented my belief in the supernatural. When I was four years old, I watched my mom's husband murder my three-year-old sister, Ashley, in front of me. He split her head open, and she survived for a week, but they declared her brain dead and took her off the ventilators. Thankfully, he went to prison for life. I always had paranormal experiences that involved her since I was eight years old, but lately they've become far more intense. About a year ago, I was in my living room watching Netflix, and I heard someone crying. I couldn't understand it because I was alone in the house. But when I looked over on the other couch, I saw a child whimpering like she was in pain. I recognized her immediately. She was wearing the same pink Minnie Mouse shirt, and her hair was half up like our mom used to fix Ashley's hair. I thought I was seeing things. I got closer and I tried to touch her, but when I did, she completely vanished. I told myself that I was just tired, and I sat back down on the couch. The second I sat back down, I heard her again, and I looked over and I saw her, and she was covering her face, crying again. I got up and did the same thing again. I tried to touch her, but again, she vanished. I went straight to her room and just broke down crying. I told myself I was seeing things, and I tried not to think about it too much. Fast forward a year, and I moved out and was living with my boyfriend and our daughter, who's two years old. My boyfriend and I woke up out of a dead sleep, hearing a little girl laugh right by our bed. But nothing and no one was there, and our daughter was asleep in her room. It freaked us both out, but again, I just tried to put it out of my mind. But for the past few weeks, my daughter will be in her room talking to herself and laughing like she's having a conversation with someone. It's gotten so bad that sometimes my boyfriend and I will go in there just to make sure that someone's not hiding in the closet. And now she's been talking to and kissing the urn that holds my sister's ashes. And it's so odd because we never talk to her about Ashley and I've never humanized that urn to give her the idea to talk to it. But what's really freaking my boyfriend and I out? The other day, she was rubbing and patting the urn and said, It okay, Ashy. Am I crazy or overthinking this entire thing? Has anyone else had a similar experience? I'm so confused. My half-brother passed away before I was born. He was six years old, and he died tragically in a car accident on a cold December day. He was buried just two days before Christmas. After the funeral, my father came home and walked into his bedroom. There, he saw my brother sitting on the bed in the same hospital gown and the bandage on his head that he had when he was being treated. He asked my dad when his mommy was coming home. 
My dad's ex-wife had left him for another man shortly before my brother had died. My father couldn't answer. He was rooted to the spot with surprise, grief, and torment. Then, as my dad watched, my brother just faded away. My father has never had any other visitations, but this one episode will stick with him forever. I was around six or seven years old, playing in my grandmother's garden. She had an old rope swing hanging from one of the trees back there. I clearly remember pushing an empty swing, but even though I was aware that it was empty, I also somehow acknowledged that at the same time there was a girl sitting in that swing, and I was playing with her. I remember talking to her, and she wanted me to push that swing into the air as hard as I could. Then my grandma called me inside, and this girl and I went running in to go clean up for dinner. Then we sat down across from one another at the dining room table, and I remember looking at her. And to this very day, I can still remember the look on her face. She was crying. She was so upset because no one had fixed up a plate for her and she realized that no one could see her or hear her but me. It was almost as if I was watching her realize for the first time that she was dead. I started crying uncontrollably, and my grandparents were extremely confused as to why I was so upset. I pointed across the table, then I looked up at my grandma and said, You forgot to make a plate for Kara. My grandmother's face turned white, and she looked at my grandpa. Then they both looked at me, worried, and they said, What name did you just say? When I repeated the name and looked back across the table, Kara was gone. It turns out my cousin Kara died of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, at the age of two. She was born the same year as me. It was a really tragic event for my family, and they never told us kids about it, or even mentioned her name. To this day, that memory still follows me, and I think about it often. Let me know what you guys think, and if you've had anything similar happen to you. I sometimes hear noises in the bedroom where my grandma passed away. My grandma died a few years ago, and not long after, my mom said that she got up to use the bathroom one morning, and she heard voices coming from the bedroom on the other side of the door, and that bathroom is directly connected to my grandmother's bedroom. Before grandma passed away, she had dementia. During her final days, she would talk to people who weren't there. You would hear her in the bedroom talking to family members who had long passed away. One time, when I was in another room, my grandmother was in her bedroom talking with these dead family members. And in between my grandmother's voice, I swear, I heard another woman answer her back. And it wasn't my grandmother's voice. It was really freaky. When she talked to the dead family members, there would also be this energy... It seemed to linger between the bedroom and the living room next to it. The atmosphere felt very different at the time, like there was something heavy in the air. Sometimes now, when I go to the bathroom, regardless of the time of day, I'll hear sounds coming from my grandmother's bedroom. It's not uncommon to hear what sounds like something being put down on a desk, and it's not exactly quiet either. It's actually pretty loud and I always check with my family members to make sure they weren't in there at the time. And they never are. My family has experienced many paranormal things throughout the years, especially my parents and myself. One particular story that I share often 
happened about 11 years ago to the day. My uncle, my dad's younger brother, drowned tragically in Lake Michigan. It was heartbreaking for all of us. The night he died, my immediate family members gathered outside at night and sat around the fire and just processed everything. As we were sitting there, my mom looked down at her watch and she said, Oh, it's 11.11 p.m. Say a little prayer for your uncle. My dad asked what was so special about 11.11. Mom said that that's the time when the spirit world opens up to this one. And at that very moment, a huge, bright, and clear shooting star flew by. It was an awesome sight. Then, during the funeral, we noticed that the very moment that the coffin was closed, it was 11.11 a.m. Fast forward to later that day. We arrived back at our house and I went upstairs. I noticed that the answering machine had two messages on it. I checked and the first one was spam, but the next one had a timestamp of 11.11 a.m. and it came through as unknown name, unknown number. I played the message and there was nothing on it but a low hum of static. There was no voice. I yelled for my family to come upstairs. We played it many times and checked the machine again and again, but we couldn't find anything wrong with it. To this day, I don't think it was a coincidence. It was our uncle saying that he was okay and giving us some sort of peace. I usually just share the story with close friends, but I'm happy to share it here, too. My mother's late brother suffered from schizophrenia, and she took care of him. She says I look exactly like him. She's told me stories about my Uncle Ryan, like how he once woke her and my dad up at 3 a.m., saying that there were screaming turtles in their mattress, and he was holding a knife. But he never hurt anyone, ever, and apparently he always meant well. He died before I was born, hit by a car in the street in front of our house. My mom always told me that he haunted our home. She told me a story from when I was a baby. When I would cry, the only way to make me stop crying was to rock me in my carriage back and forth. One time, when my mom was in the living room visiting with a neighbor, I began crying in my carriage. Before mom even had a chance to get up and walk over to me, I stopped crying. She took a look and my carriage was already slowly rocking me back and forth by itself. My neighbor said it scared her so badly, all she could do is stare in amazement. Another time, when I was a kid, I was really sneaky and I liked to jump out from behind the curtains and scare my little sister. I took every opportunity to do that given half a chance. One night, when we were all sitting watching TV, my sister went into the kitchen to grab a snack. When she came back, she had a look of puzzlement on her face. She said, how did you go back to the room before I did? I had no idea what she was talking about, but she said that she had seen my feet underneath the curtains and heard me giggling. My mom jumped up to go see if the door was still locked, but no one and nothing was there. Mom said it was the ghost of my uncle. Also, sometimes the bathroom lights will just turn off all on their own. When I was 12, I was in my bedroom and I heard my mom say, Ryan, turn those lights back on. I got up to see what was going on, and she told me that Uncle Ryan likes to mess with her and turn the lights off when she's in the bathroom. I have to say, I never believed my mom when she told me that the house was haunted by my uncle, and I didn't believe in the paranormal at all. That is, until my own experience. When I was around 15, my little sister's appendix burst, and my mom went to stay with her in the hospital, so I was left alone to watch over the house for a week. I thought it would be awesome to have the house to myself. That is, until my first night there alone. My mom usually slept with the TV on, so it was very dark and quiet without her there, 
and I heard every noise in our tiny house. With every little sound scaring me, I rationalized that it had to be my head messing with me, so I decided to just take a shower and go to bed early. I turned on the hot water in the shower, then I remembered I needed to get a towel, so I stepped into the hallway to get to the linen closet. I stopped dead in my tracks in the bathroom doorway, terrified, because I saw a tall, skinny shadow of a man standing outside the door. I don't know how to explain this, but it wasn't a shadow of anything. It was like the shadow was a person unto itself, fully black yet see-through at the same time. I stood there for only a moment before running into my room and throwing some clothes on. I quickly made my way to the front door, but stopping at the bathroom briefly to turn off the shower. Then I left the house and ran three blocks to my friend's house. I didn't tell my friend why I was there. He'd think I was crazy. I just asked if I could spend the night because it was weird being in an empty house all by myself. His parents understood because they knew that my sister was in the hospital. So I stayed there, only going back to my house for fresh clothes for school. Otherwise, I stayed the entire week with my friend. A week later, when my mom came back home, I told her what happened. She asked me what the shadow man looked like, and I said, what? He was a tall, skinny shadow. Shadows don't have features. Well, she said, if it was a tall, skinny shadow, then it was probably Uncle Ryan. I haven't really seen much more of Uncle Ryan, other than the bathroom lights being turned off when I'm in there. I'll shout, turn those lights back on, and I'll get no response. Then I say politely, Ryan, please turn the lights back on, and they come on. Even with the dead, we must always be polite. When I was in my 20s, I ended up moving into my grandma's house a couple of months after she passed away. It was an opportunity for free rent while I went to school. I ended up living there for about six years, and the whole time I was there, I felt like there was someone or something watching me. I sort of just chalked up that feeling to the fact that my grandmother had just died, and I was living in a house full of her stuff. I never felt unsafe but it could be extremely unsettling at times, especially in this one area of the house that encompassed the TV room, the hallway, and the entry to the kitchen. Whenever I was in the TV room, I would always get that feeling of being watched very strongly. I'd always be glancing around the corner into the hallway, expecting to see something looking back at me, but I never did. After a few years of living there, and this feeling not going away, I decided that it must be my grandmother watching over me. Fast forward to after I had moved out and my brother and his wife had moved in. They had converted the TV room into a guest room, and I happened to be visiting pretty late one night and had decided to stay over, and I ended up sleeping in the old TV room, now the guest room. In the middle of the night, I was awoken from a dead sleep by something poking me repeatedly and very firmly in the side. As soon as I was fully awake, it stopped, but the creepy part was that I could still feel the after effects on my skin, like that tingling sensation that you get when you're being poked. If you try it on your own skin, you'll know what I mean. There was no way anyone could have snuck into that room, poked me, and left the room without me hearing or seeing them. Plus. The bed was flush to the wall, and my back was to the wall, so it would have been very awkward for anyone to accomplish that. I started freaking out because it was at that moment that I knew that all of those years that I felt like I was being watched, it wasn't just in my head. There was definitely something here, and I wanted to figure out what it was. I realized I never felt weird visiting there as a child and my grandparents had built the house and were the original owners, 
So those are the big reasons why I think it was my grandmother's spirit hanging around. I also experienced little things, like her favorite lamp repeatedly being turned on and off, or the doorbell ringing on its own. Finally, I had a dream about her coming to say goodbye and showing me where she was headed. This happened maybe two or three years after she passed away. In the dream, I become aware of a woman in her thirties looking down on me while I lie in bed. She's wearing a flowing white gown, and my bed gets transported into the middle of a gorgeous sunny field of golden grass. I distinctly remember looking at this lady and asking her, Aren't you supposed to be dead? I know, not very sensitive, but I wasn't trying to be rude. I was genuinely confused as to why I was seeing her. Also confusing to me was that I didn't recognize her at first because in my dream she looked so young, but a part of me just knew it was her. My grandmother was in her late 80s when she died, but she looked 30 in my dream. She was also very serene, and she seemed to let the question about her being dead pass on by. She was looking over at a group of young people, maybe five or six of them, having a picnic and laughing and generally having a great time over by a tree in the middle of the field. She gestured towards them, as if to tell me that she would be going with them now. And that's all I remember from the dream. But yeah, it took me a minute to realize that this was my grandma, only years younger, which is why I didn't recognize her at first. I now believe that she was coming through to tell me that she was moving on, and the people at the picnic? Well, they were most likely friends and relatives that had died before her, come to greet her and help her on her way. It was really beautiful. Some of these stories tonight were rather profound. Then again, I've always been a believer. But where do you stand on the subject of life after death? Have you ever received a message from a loved one that had passed on to the great beyond? Put your thoughts in the comment section below and let me know. Thank you all for listening tonight and for your continued support. It really means a lot to me. So... Until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>